You ask questions, and I answer them. It's nuts. What are you talking about? It's super cool because of the deadly zombie. Boom watch fam. What is up? Hashtag. I was gonna say hashtag, and then I had it. I kind of stuttered. It's funny. I speak in hashtag so often because I, I hashtag. You know, whenever all my photos, you know, three, four times a day on Instagram. I even play a game sometimes called the hashtag game, where like I look at things and I'll think of like you know quickly twenty hashtags uh, of that thing. It's it's boring, but it's like a watch thing. What is up, watch geeks? Welcome to episode fifty-six of Ask T N H. They stop texting me, so uh, let's get into the questions. <laughs> How can you tell the difference between patina and damage? Well, first of all, um, this question was asked like four weeks ago, and I'm so sorry for not getting to this sooner. Uh, I feel awful about that, but we just get so many freaking questions. I apologize already, but onto the question. Patina becomes damage, you know, when it no longer looks good, when it's no longer tasteful. I don't want to get on my high horse about having taste because it's a very hard thing to talk about. Um, taste... <sighs> The nature of taste is very subjective, right? And I can't teach you how to have taste and you can't teach me and, you know, John Goldberger can't teach everyone. It's just not how it works. You need to have taste. You know, that's it. You know, objectively, patina is damage. A patina de Rolex de Daytona went at, you know, Phillips the other day uh, for $2 million. So that wasn't damage to whoever bought it. It was beautiful. It was an addition. It was uh, an enhancement of the watch. Right. And I agree with that. I think when, you know, certain patinas, um, actually shout out Kid Whistle at Kid Whistle. He has a really cool patina uh, chronograph that I sold him at Theo and Harris watch shop. Honestly, my best advice, take a photo of a watch, post it on Instagram, take a good photo of a watch, post it on Instagram at a bunch of people and ask them what they think about it. And not if you should buy it, not, you know, if uh, they like the watch, if it is pretty to them. That's it. That's, that's, that's honestly my best advice uh, to anyone that's trying to differentiate if they can't do it on their own patina and damage. Uh, if people like it, if people think it looks pretty, then it's no longer damage. Now it's patina, right? I mean, patina is damage, but you know they have different kind of connotations or denotations, whatever the, f the difference in those two words are. Is um, that's what it is? It's it's the value there. So if if, if people uh, if a, if a market enjoys it, if they value it, it's patina, and if they don't, it's damage. You know, I like to stay within caramels and chocolates, um, like the color on the dial. I I strongly advise against like blackish browns that kind of look like dirt. Uh, and I strongly advise against greens, because uh, that, that happens. I mean, it just depends on the humidity and the dial and what was going on in this watch's life. So, I mean, as far as like vague heads up, like that that's it. But don't get too caught up in that stuff. Really post a photo, share it with people. Um, and then of course, know your market and what to pay for something like that. And it's super important because the difference between uh, the difference between X watch, unpatinated, in good condition, in, in normal condition, and that watch with patina can be enormous. Like, even on the low end, Phillips, the $2 million Daytona, I'm talking straight, um, you know, Panda chronograph. Well, an Imperial, like an Imperial, you know, that's a, it's a, it's a chronograph, you know, by, by label, just a value movement, probably. Regular dial, yeah, it's going to sell for, let's call it 1200 bucks. But if it's a caramel patina in the subdials, I mean, you could demand 1800 2000 you know you, you, there really is no end. It's really what the market perceives it to be worth. And what's great about the patina is they are hard to find. You know, they are harder and they are rarer. So someone who really wants it is probably going to be willing to pay a little bit or a lot more for X watch. But that's really what it is. I mean, you know, that's all I got. Thank you guys for watching episode 56 of Ask TNH. While we're on the topic of patina, since they're valuable watches, you should insure them if you own them. So go back to episode 55 of Ask TNH uh, and check out my thoughts on, um, on insuring your watch, what you should pay, what, you know, stuff like that. So there's a link here. Do that. Thank you guys for watching.